Many G-protein coupled receptors accumulate in the membrane of primary cilia and then exit this sensory organelle when their signalling pathway is activated. The BB-zome, a complex of proteins mutated in Bardet-Biedl syndrome, has been implicated in the ciliary trafficking of GPCRs and other membrane proteins, but, as Max Nashery from the University of California, San Francisco explains, the precise function of this complex has been somewhat controversial. It was thought that the BB-zome functions to bring membrane proteins, GPCR, and other signaling receptors into cilia. But then there were other evidence that came from Lamidomonas that suggested that the BB-zome was, in fact, doing the reverse task, which is to carry proteins out of the cilium. And so we were interested to just figure out what the BB-zome is actually doing. Nashuri, along with co-first authors Fan Yi and Andrew Nager, realised that if they expressed fluorescently tagged GPCRs at low levels, their exit from cilia would not be masked by the influx of newly synthesised receptors. Once Drew and Fan were able to titrate down those levels of expression, they were able to see signal-dependent exits so in the presence of agonist, somatostatin receptors free exited cilia, and in the presence of hedgehog pathway agonist, a downstream GPCR called GPR161 exited cilia, and so on and so forth. And this is where then the results were crystal clear in that whenever we interfered with BB zone function, the signal dependent exit was impaired but the entry into cilia was not. Though Nashery thinks that the BB-zome is also involved in the constitutive retrieval of membrane proteins from cilia, his team focused on how the complex removes GPCRs upon receptor activation. When those GPCRs became activated, we started to see this big clump of BB-zome at the tip of cilia. And Drew and Fan got this beautiful chymograph and beautiful movies where they could see some very bright foci that would emanate from these clumps and that were moving in a very ordered and processive manner from the tip to the base of cilia. So you have an on-demand formation of this so-called retrograde BB zone train. They don't just assemble all the time, but they're actually responding to the signal. The researchers found that receptor activation triggers the BB-zome's accumulation at the tips of cilia by activating G-alpha-I to inhibit adenylate cyclase and lower the ciliary levels of cyclic AMP. The subsequent reduction in protein kinase A activity allows the plus N-directed microtubule motor KIF7 to recruit the BB-zome to the ciliary tip. Inhibiting G-alpha-I, or knocking down KIF-7, impaired BB's own tip accumulation and the signal-dependent retrieval of GPCRs from cilia. Nashery and colleagues reasoned that the retrograde BB's own trains that form at the tip remove ciliary membrane proteins by coupling them to the intraflagella transport, or IFT, machinery. The researchers found that the retrograde BB zone trains move in conjunction with the IFT-B complex, but determining whether the trains also carry GPCRs was a little more challenging. We calculated that at the very, very most, there is going to be 1% of the GPCR content that's moving on a BB zone train. And it's likely that it's much less than that. And this essentially defeats every attempt at imaging movements of cargoes by bulk fluorescence. But fortunately enough, FAN had set up, uh, about five years ago, a technique to image single GPCR in cilia using a quantum dot streptavidine. And the fun thing here is that you could start to really see the GPCR moving in a processive retrograde manner upon signal activation, correlating with those retrograde uh, movements of BB-zone train. 
To the researchers' surprise, however, this retrograde movement to the base of cilia wasn't immediately followed by the GPCR's exit into the plasma membrane. What's that? And so, over and over, is that the GPCR gets stuck at the base for 10, 20 seconds. In most cases, it goes back into the cilium. And in only a very few cases does a GPCR manage to exit the cilium. So we could see this multi-step exit process where there is retrograde transport, confinement at the base, diffusion in these zones that we call the airlock. The receptors have gone through a first door and they don't quite make it through the second door. It turns out they very rarely make it through the second door. So what did these two doors of the airlock correspond to in terms of cellular structures? This airlock, or intermediate compartment, in which GPCRs are temporarily confined at the base of cilia, appears to be bounded on one side by the transition zone, a region of the cilium that has previously been suggested to form a diffusion barrier separating the ciliary and plasma membranes. One of the biggest questions in the cilium field is how is the transition zone functioning as a diffusion barrier? And how can this diffusion barrier be breached? And what these single molecule study told us is that the BB zone is moving activated GPCR through the transition zone in, as far as we can tell, an unimpeded manner. If GPCR are not activated or if BB zone function has been compromised, now the barrier functions as a brick wall. And so it means that there must be something very special about the GPCR that are carried by a BB zone train. And that's where I'm hoping to really follow in the future on what I think is a very exciting question. Once an activated GPCR has been carried across the transition zone, however, its final exit from the cilium is largely blocked by an additional periciliary diffusion barrier. This second airlock door appears to be localised at the transition fibres that connect the cilia's basal body to the plasma membrane, but its precise identity, and how it is occasionally crossed, remains to be seen. For now though, you can learn more about how BB zone trains remove activated GPCRs from cilia by enabling passage through the transition zone, in the paper by Yi, Nager and Nashery, published in the May 7th, 2018 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Oh.